Welcome to the Godolphin Racing Stables here in Sydney, Crown Lodge. Thanks uh, for, for joining us live uh, in what is going to be an exciting week leading into the Golden Slipper. We have five Group 1 races on the day and I'm joined by Godolphin's head trainer, James Cummings. Welcome. Good afternoon, uh, Darren. How are you? Very good. Very good. Now, James, uh, we've accepted with Kemantari in the George Ryder, Special K. How's he going? He's going, he's going very well. Um, well the picket fence, this preparation has been, uh, has been um, you come to everybody's great satisfaction. Um, but importantly, after kicking the group one goal last start in the round with guineas, he just feels, he feels a million dollars and, uh, and he's like, he's perhaps as fresh as he's been going into a race um, that he's been all preparation. Um, he, he, he worked effortlessly on Tuesday morning as he's, uh, as he's his custom. Um, he does things very easily, but um, but the important thing is he just really is high on energy at the moment, and he's you know he's got a great amount of spirit about him despite having um, having performed so strongly in the guineas. Um, but look, if you just watch the replay, how e easily he just cruised up to them and put them away, uh, I suppose that that's no surprise. Yeah. So our feeling is that he really needs this run in the lead up to the Doncaster because we certainly don't want him to be too above himself when he gets there, and we have um, you know we have our our um, expectations just minimised given the fact that we're coming into um, a race where there's a once in a lifetime horse that we're taking on and she's, uh, she's also probably you know, one of the world's greatest ever wet trackers and, uh, and the half an inch of rain that we got at Rose Hill overnight and, uh, and, and more expected throughout the week looks like making it a pretty testing wet track for the weekend. Does it give you a bit of confidence he's been on the wet track, he's had one, run, one start for one win on a soft six? Yeah, I loved watching that replay of him at, uh, at Randwick because, you know, with his toe in the ground, he really seemed to excel, uh, particularly when he went away, with, went away from them like the last, the last 150. So um, look, that should pose no problems for him. And oh, he's a son of Lonro, um, who you rode and knew so well. Tell us a question back at you. Any similarities, father and son? Uh, and and, uh, and, and what, what did you sort of... What did you get, gain from having ridden two George Ryder winners yourself? Um, I think probably the, the biggest asset that both horses have got, they've got acceleration. Sure, yeah. They can get themselves out of trouble. Um, you know, they're, they're, uh, they've got the right temperament. A wise person once said, attitude determines altitude. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, you know, great attitude, both horses. And... Um, you know, it was there the other day. We we seen uh, Kamantari before the Guineas. He's standing there watching the TV like he's very yeah. chilled. So I yeah. think that that'll that'll carry him a long way in in, yeah. in, in in his races. Yeah, he seems to stand there before the gates a little like he does when he comes down the hill at Osborne Park. He he just pervades the land like he owns it. Yeah, and he goes out to conquer. And he's he's got a presence about him a lot yes. like his dad. Um, you know. Well, you know, the, the great horses have just got such an aura about them, and he seems to have that. And how did you find the George Ryder as a race? Um, what did you what did what did you uh, what did you gain from winning that race a couple of times? Well, he was always the marked horse. I guess um, on Saturday, Kemantari is not going to be the marked horse, so yeah. he's going to be able to fly a little bit under the radar in the George Ryder. But when you get a, when you've got a standout horse like a Winx or a Lonro in a race, all eyes are on you. So. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so um, we also have uh, we also have Viridine going to the Galaxy on Saturday. Um, the, the horse was able to win two starts as a two-year-old. Uh, that'll be a pretty exciting race for the team, given that he's down in the handicaps. It is. He's only got 50 kilos, and um, he's had the one start on a soft track there at Rose Hill in a soft on a soft five. Um, and his run the other day was was a was the eye-catching run of the yeah. race, and probably probably the run of the day given the, the the sectionals he ran. I think they run home in 33 something, low 33. So he's broken 33. So mm. um, he's um, he's obviously come through that run well. Yeah, he has. He's tightened up nicely, um, and the key is getting down to a handicap now. He uh, he's going to give himself a, a real shot at a Group One here. So, like I said, you know that's um, that's going to give us a great amount of excitement. Uh, you know, outside of the main the main uh, uh, event for us on the day, which will be the George Ryder. Um, what about any questions? Have we got any questions from the audience? Uh, oh, we, be, we better talk about the Golden Slipper. Oh, yeah, we should, of course. <laughs> Come on, James. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're fingers crossed we're going to get in. We're, 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 we're nearly there. We're second emergency, and the, uh, the racing officials have, um, have been through this morning to, to make sure our filly's all right. Couldn't, um, you, couldn't you give her one extra gallop so she would have got second <laughs> in Silver Slipper to well, get in? Well, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a fine line, but... 
If she doesn't get in, the good thing for gongs is she can always steer towards a Percy Sykes. We could give her a little, we could give her a little um, a, a, a barrier trial on Monday. And if we get to a Percy Sykes, you know, that's a great race to springboard her into a, a strong three-year-old career next time. But we, we do like her, and she's got a lot of uh, a lot of ability. Now this is the nursery of the two-year-olds here at Crown Lodge, and we've got all our two-year-olds here, or well, most of them. There's some in Melbourne, but we've got Encryption, Christabel. Um, wh where are they heading? Okay, so Encryption, we were really impressed with his effort to win the Group 3 Black Opal Stakes so last Sunday in Canberra. Uh, we are going to head straight towards the Group 1 size produce with him. Uh, of course, he's not only by Lonro and, and he's going to excel once he gets um, over seven furlongs in a mile as a three-year-old, um, but he's a, importantly a Group winner as a two-year-old now, and that justified some of the really strong performances that he's given, particularly in two unlucky runs in the spring. Um, he, he, uh, he'll go straight to the size, He'll, he'll, um, he'll eat up the 1,400 metres, and uh, you know, that's, a, that's a potential stallion-making race for Encryption, who's, um, who's also out of, out of a, a Group 1 size winner in Guelph, um, one, of our, one of probably our Sheikh Mohammed's most valuable broodmares in Australia. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's exciting for, uh, for the team, but it's also exciting for the guys out at Woodlands that are looking after Guelph every day mm. to know that they've got a, a runner, a you know, good chance in a Group 1 who's just coming off the back of a really, uh, really good storming victory. Um, but you asked about Vic Cristobal as well. Yeah. Um, oh, gee, I was impressed with the way she ran, uh, ran the slipper favourite sunline, uh, sunlight to a, to a length and a half, uh, to a, about a length and a half second on Saturday. It was only a second start in a race. Um, but as we know, that filly had been really coming along beautifully last prep as well. Um, she just needed a little bit more fine tuning at the barriers because she was just letting it all overwhelm her a little bit. Um, now that we appear to be on top of that, uh, she can also go to a she can also go to a really nice race next time. Now, whether that's going to be a size or whether we might just aim it at the Percy Sykes, uh, we'll give that a little bit more thought. But gee, she seems to have pulled up well, hasn't she? Yes, yeah, yes, she's done done extremely well. Now we've got a question here from the aptly named Purse the Punter. <laughs> he asks, "What are your plans for Duca Valentinwa and uh, and and um, you mentioned earlier on in the in the locker up. Yeah, okay. So Duca Valentinwa will be uh, going third up into the Doncaster Prelude over 1500 metres. Um, the horse performed really strongly for us third up last prep uh, when he won the um, the listed race, the Lady Days, the Ladies Day Vars at Hawkesbury. Um, he he uh, he's come through a tough run in the Newcastle Newmarket um, in good fashion, and uh, and I think that he'll run well there, but. Like I said, he's going, he's going there, but one of the horses to beat there will be a stablemate interlocutor because he's come through the Liverpool City Cup really well. Um, he needed that run as a bit of a blowout, and, uh, and I think that um, the four weeks into the Doncaster Prelude will suit him perfectly. You'll get the opportunity to see him in a, in a public barrier trial next week. So, uh, so to purse the punter, <laughs> keep, uh, keep tuned into those, uh, those trials at Randwick on Monday. Hopefully they go ahead with this wet weather. All right, we've had another one fired in by uh, Ryan Osborne on Twitter this morning. Uh, what are Roosevelt's plans for the rest of the autumn? Yeah, Roosevelt's an interesting horse. We decided not to put the gun to his head so quickly or, you know, put the pressure on him, so to speak, uh, um, so quickly and, and, and run him against um, the Blue Diamond winner written by on the weekend. Um, we just eased off him a little bit and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take him towards the kindergarten stakes on the, on the first day of the championship. Um, it's a really good race. It's launched the staying careers of at least, uh, at least two Colts that we have at start at Daly at the moment in, uh, in Astern, who won the S Silver Slipper, uh, as well as Hello Crown. So if he, can, if he can win a race like that, you know, I think it's a mark of a really nice colt, and I'm sure he's going to um, excel even more when he turns three. Another one with a good attitude. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right, another question here from Brad Miller on Twitter. Is Viridine likely to head to the three-year-old Arrowfield sprint after the Galaxy? Well, that's a good question. So we've really targeted Viridine's preparation towards this Group 1 handicap on Saturday. Um, he'll be throwing everything at that race. Um, if he is able to come out of that and you know, absorb that run really easily, then definitely that race is a, is a, is a good option. Um, Heaven forbid, we've also got him nominated for the TJ Smith the, the following week. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll give that consideration because I feel like the horse ran really well against um, Red Zell uh, in, the, in the challenge stakes. Uh, but definitely at set weights, if he was to really perform strongly, um, you know, with his, even with his rating right now, he's, in, he's thrown in that race. And, uh, and I think, that's a, I think that's, that's a sort of race that will become a Group 1 in years to come, that, that, um, that Group 2 1200 uh, Arrowfield stakes. He, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a race that earmarks a, a top cult, I think, and, uh, and it would be a, I think it would be a really, uh, really good trophy to, for, for Viridine to have on his mantelpiece before going to stud. 
and uh, with Poet's voice, voice passing away, it'd be yeah. good if, if, he, if he can get up. Yeah, absolutely. That was quite sad this week that yeah. um, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed's stallion did pass away. Um, and and Viridine is definitely the, the best son of Poet's Voice Racing in Australia at the moment. Uh, so it'd be great to see um, it'd be great to see him produce a, a big result. It'd be um, you know to be a, an emotional moment I think for His Highness Sheikh Mohammed. Hundred percent. And next question is from Matt Homewood. G'day, Matt. How you going? Elise looked a little bit a, a, a touch unlucky uh, on Saturday. Where does she progress to, and how she come out of the run? Yeah, we're going to run a um, Elise in the Emancipation next Saturday um, on, uh, on Tancred Day. She came out of the run really well. And uh, look, had it not been for an interrupted path the last furlong, she might have picked up a couple of lengths to be in the firing line. Um, look, she, uh, she loves to leave it late, so sometimes she's going to find herself in those positions. But um, gee, we're, we're, I reckon she's pulled up better from that run on the weekend than she did from her first up win. So definitely, uh, definitely um, uh, a, a good preparation remaining for Elise in her, in her next couple of starts. You've got a bit of firepower there for the carnival. We do, um, we do, and we've had a we've had a good little run. So uh, if we can keep the run continuing, um, yeah. I'm sure we'll be uh, we'll be pretty happy. But it has been uh, it has been a lot of fun to see some of the blue colours racing to the front and uh, punching the air when they've when they've got the win. So hopefully, uh, like I said, you know, if everyone keeps um, keeps their, their spirits high and keep the passion right up, then uh, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that the uh, luck will come our way when we need it. Good, thanks James. All right. Well, good. thanks everyone for joining us this evening and uh, make sure you support the Godolphin team. Good night and good luck. <laughs> Punt on. <laughs>